Hello students. Today we will learn about braking system. So brakes are used to slow down or to stop the motion of a moving member whenever required. So we know that brakes means to stop. So Brakes can be used to stop the vehicle completely or to slow down the motion of the moving member whenever we need. So, brakes are used to slow down or stop the motion of the moving member. whenever required so in other words we can say that brakes are one of the very important control components of a vehicle so brakes are very important control components of a vehicle so the main function of a brake is to stop the vehicle within the smallest possible distance. So it has to stop the vehicle and also in the smallest possible distance. So the main function of brake is to stop the vehicle. within smallest possible distance so how does the brake do this function how does it stop the vehicle so this is done by converting the kinetic energy of the vehicle into heat energy and this heat is dissipated in the environment so how does the brake stop the vehicle by converting the kinetic energy kinetic energy is energy in motion so the energy in motion is that is the kinetic energy is converted into heat energy and this heat energy is dissipated in the environment so this is done by converting the kinetic energy of the vehicle into heat energy and this heat is dissipated that is released in the environment. So in braking action, the kinetic energy is converted into heat by friction. So how does this kinetic energy get converted into heat? It is converted by friction and generated heat is ultimately dissipated to the atmosphere. So, the kinetic energy is converted to heat by friction and generated heat is dissipated to the atmosphere. So, what are the different types of braking system? So, types of braking system. So, there are five different types of braking system which we are going to discuss. The first one is the band brake, the second one is the single 
block brick. The third one is the band and block brick. The fourth one is the internal expanding shoe brick. And the fifth one is the disc brick. So, the first one that is the band break. So, we will discuss all these breaks in detail. The first one which we are going to discuss is the band break. So, the band break here in this figure, they are showing the configuration of this break. That is the simple band break. So, this is a band break. So, this band break band break. So, it consists of a flexible band of leather or steel lined with frictional material which wraps the major circumference of the drum. So, there is a flexible band. So, you can see this is the band which is made up of either leather or steel and it is lined with frictional material which wraps the major circumference of the drum. So, as shown in the figure, this band covers the major circumference of this drum. So, this is the brake drum. So, here this circular part is called as the brake drum. So, one end of the band is attached to the fulcrum. O. So, here there is a fulcrum and it is O. So, this band, one end of this band is attached to this fulcrum of liver. That is the length of that liver is given as L. So, here you can see th this is the liver here. The fulcrum is on the liver and the length of the liver is L. And the other end of this band is fixed to the liver at a distance of x. So, the distance between the first fulcrum's end and the other end is x. So, it is marked as x. So, one end of this band is attached at the fulcrum. The other end is attached at a distance x from this fulcrum end. So, this consists of, so it consists of a flexible band of leather or steel lined with frictional material which wraps the major circumference of the drum. So, one end of the band is attached to the fulcrum O of the liver that is length of the liver is L and other end is fixed to the liver at distance X. So, whenever brake is applied a force F is applied at the end of the lever which tightens the rotating wheel and braking force is generated. So, when you want to stop the vehicle and you apply the brake, then what happens is when the brake is applied, a force F is applied at the end of the lever. So, here force F will be applied at the end of the lever. So, here you can see F that is the force is applied at the end of this lever. It will tighten the rotating wheel. So,
so this force will tighten the rotating wheel and braking force is generated so this system is used in material handling equipments so whenever the brake is applied a force f is applied at the end of the lever so which tightens the lever will tighten the rotating wheel and braking force is generated so this system is used in material handling equipments so this is the working of a simple band brake the second braking system which we are going to discuss is single block brake so in this type of braking system so the figure is shown here so it consists of a block so this is the block which is made up of asbestos and it is rigidly mounted on a drum so this block is also called as a shoe so this block is rigidly pressed against the rim of a rotating drum so this block is pressed against the rim so this is the rim of this rotating drum so this is a drum here so it consists of of a block which is also called as a shoe which is pressed against the rim of a rotating drum so this block is made up of material having high coefficient of friction such as asbestos or wooden so this block must be made up of materials which have high coefficient of friction so the block or shoe is made up of material which has high coefficient of friction such as asbestos or wooden so the friction between the block and the drum causes a tangential braking force to act on the drum so when the brake is applied this block is pressed against this rotating drum so the friction between these two parts that is the block and the rotating drum will cause a tangential braking force to act on this drum so the friction between the block and drum will cause a tangential braking force to act on the drum so this braking force retards or stops the rotation of the drum so this force that is the braking force which is developed due to friction will retard that is it will slow down or it will stop the rotation of this drum so this braking force 
retards or stops the rotation of the drum so whenever a breaking force is applied the block is pressed against the drum by a force f applied on one end of the lever where the other end of the lever is pivoted on a fixed fulcrum so this is a fixed fulcrum so whenever breaking force is applied then what happens this block is pressed against this drum so the breaking force is applied to one end of the lever the other end of the lever is pivoted on a fixed fulcrum o whenever the breaking force is applied the block is pressed against the drum by a force f applied to one end of the lever where the other end of lever is pivoted on a fixed fulcrum o so it is marked as o here so when more breaking force is required a double block break is used so here this is a single block so if you want more breaking force then one more block can be added and a double block break will be used the advantage of this is the breaking action will be doubled so if there are two blocks then the breaking action will be doubled with the same applied force and also an unbalanced force created on the shaft because of single block can be totally eliminated because of single block there will be unbalanced force which is created on the shaft so that will be eliminated by adding two blocks so here you, there is a single block if you want to double the breaking force then you can use two blocks this will not only double the breaking force but also will eliminate the unbalanced forces on the shaft so this type of system is used in cranes and hoists so when more breaking force is required a double block break is used the advantage of this is the breaking action is doubled with the same applied force so an unbalanced force created on the shaft due to single block 
can be totally eliminated by using double blocks. So this type of system is used in cranes and hoists. So this type of braking system is used in cranes and hoists. The next type of braking system is band and the third type is band and block brake. So here the configuration is shown in the figure. So this consists of number of wood blocks secured inside a flexible steel band. So there is a band here which is made up of steel. So these wood blocks are, so there are number of wood blocks. So all these marks are wood blocks. So all the wood blocks are secured inside a steel band which is a flexible steel band. So when force is applied for braking, the blocks are pressed against the drum. So this is the drum. So here you can see this circular part is the drum. So when force, braking force is applied, that is when you apply the brake, these wooden blocks are pressed against the drum and they will provide the braking action. So this consists of a number of wooden blocks secured inside a flexible steel band. So when the force is applied for braking, the blocks are pressed against the drum and provides the braking action. So you might have observed in bicycles. So if this is the wheel of the bicycle, you can see two rubber bands, band like things. When you apply brake, you can see that these blocks of rubber come closer to the wheel and they will stop the rotation of this wheel. So the same way these wooden blocks will when you apply the brakes these blocks will come in contact with the drum and they will stop the rotation of this drum and thereby providing the braking action. So wooden blocks are which are used they have, why wooden blocks are used because they have higher coefficient of friction and they can be replaced easily if they are worn out without much cost. So wooden blocks are used as it has that is wood has higher coefficient of friction. And also, they can be replaced easily if worn out without much cost. So, they are not that costly. So, its braking action is more compared with the band brakes. So band and block brake 
ब्रेकिंग सिस्टम बैंड एंड ब्लॉक ब्रेकिंग सिस्टम गिव्स मोर ब्रेकिंग एक्शन when compared to band break system so this type of system is used in material handling industries so this type of breaking system that is band and block breaking system is used in material handling industries the fourth type of breaking system is internal expanding shoe brake so these brakes are provided internally on the brake drum so this is the brake drum so here you can see there are some shoes so these white colored ones are the shoes there are two shoes they are provided internally that is inside the brake drum so this is the drum and these are the shoes so the configuration is shown in this figure so these brakes are provided internally on the brake drum so two semi circular shoes are pivoted at the fulcrums o1 and o2 and the outer surface of the shoes are lined with frictional material that is ferredo for providing frictional force during braking so there are two shoes as i have already told and they are pivoted at two fulcrums fixed fulcrums o1 and o2 so here it is fixed at or pivoted at the ends and the outer surface of these shoes are lined with frictional material that is ferredo for providing frictional force during the braking are pivoted the outer surface surfaces of these shoes are lined with frictional material so here ferredo is used for providing frictional force or friction force during braking so the shoes are kept away from the drum when they are not working with the help of a spring force so here you can see there is a spring so these shoes are kept away from the drum in normal condition that is when they are when brake is not applied the shoes are away from the drum that is normal conditions with the help of a spring force so there is a spring which is attached to the shoes and this spring will keep the shoes away from the drum under normal conditions so the drum rotates freely under normal condition as drum's inner diameter is higher than the shoe's outer diameter so the inner diameter of this drum is more than the shoe's outer diameter so 
the drum will rotate freely when under normal conditions the braking force that is required for operating the drum by means of cam operation cam operated by hydraulic cylinder so this hydraulic cylinder is not shown in this figure so when the cam is operated so here you can see there is a cam here so this is the oval shaped form is a cam okay so the braking force which is required to operate this drum is provided by this cam and this cam is operated by means of hydraulic cylinder so when the cam is operated the shoes are pushed outwards against the rim of the drum so when this cam is operated these shoes will be pushed in this direction that is outward towards the rim of the drum so due to friction between the inner surface of the drum and the outer surface of the shoes which has a friction lining the friction force opposite to the rotation of the drum is exerted and braking takes place so when this cam is operated the shoes will be pushed outward towards the rim of this drum and there will be so here there is a frictional lining okay so because of this there will be friction developed between these two surfaces that is the outer surface of the shoes and the inner surface of the drum so in these two surfaces friction will be developed the friction force opposite to the rotation of the drum will be exerted so when the cam is operated the shoe are pushed outward or pushed towards outwards against the rim of the drum due to friction between the inner surface of the drum and friction lining a force opposite to the rotation of the drum is exerted and braking takes place so as the whole assembly is enclosed in the drum it is not exposed to dust and moisture so this system is universally used in automobile industries for both two wheelers three wheelers four wheelers as well as for low and high capacity vehicles so the whole assembly is present inside this drum only so it is not this assembly is not exposed to moisture or dust so this system is used in used universally in automobile industry for two wheelers three wheelers four wheelers as well as for low and high capacity vehicles so this is about the internal expanding shoe brake the next type of brake is the disc brake this is the fifth type of brake disc brake is a wheel brake which slows rotation of the wheel by friction so it is a wheel brake that slows the rotation of the wheel 
by friction. So most modern cars have disc brakes on the front wheels and some have disc brake on all the four wheels. So most modern cars have disc brake on the front wheel some have disc brakes on all the four wheels so the main components of disc brake are the disc the brake pads so here you can see there are brake pads so there are two pads which are in black color here so these are called as the brake pads then the caliper so you can see there is a caliper here which consists the piston so the caliper consists the piston and the rotor so this is the rotor rotor is here so this rotor is mounted on the hub so wheels are attached to the hub the main components of a disc brake are the brake pads the caliper which contains a piston then there is the rotor which is mounted on the hub the friction caused by pushing brake pads against a brake disc with a set of caliper is shown in this figure so what happens friction is caused by pushing the brake pads against the brake disc with a set of calipers to slow or stop the rotation of the wheel so here there are brake pads what happens is when you apply the brake so these are the brake pads what happens is when you apply the brake these pads come closer to each other on the brake disc with the help of these calipers so this will slow down or stop the rotation of the wheel so friction caused by the pushing of brake pads against a brake disc with a set of calipers slows down or stops the rotation of the wheel so the brake disc is usually made up of cast iron but in some cases it may be made up of composites such as reinforced carbon or ceramic matrix composite so this disc brake
for the brake disc is made up of cast iron in some cases it may be made up of composite such as reinforced carbon carbon or ceramic matrix composites so this is connected to the wheel or to the axle so the disc brake disc is connected to the to the wheel or axle so to stop the wheel friction material in the form of brake pads mounted on a device called as brake caliper is forced mechanically hydraulically pneumatically or electromagnetically against both sides of the disc so this caliper may be forced on the disc to produce the friction it may be done either mechanically hydraulically pneumatically or electromagnetically so to stop the wheel friction material in the form of brake pads mounted on the mounted on a device called brake caliper is forced so the brake pads can be forced on the disc mechanically hydraulically pneumatically or electro magnetically against both sides of the disc so this friction which is developed by this friction pads or brake pads will cause the wheel to slow down or stop friction causes the disc and attached wheel so so the disc is attached on the wheel to slow down or stop so this disc brake is lot like the brakes on the bicycle so when if you have used the bicycle you might have seen how the brakes of the bicycle are present the same way there are some rubber pads which are present on either side of the wheel okay so when you apply the brakes you can see these rubber pads come close to the wheel and they will stop the rotation of the wheel so the disc brake is a lot like the brakes on a bicycle so bicycle brakes also have a caliper which squeezes the brake pads against the wheel 
against the wheel. So in the disc brake, the brake pads squeeze the rotor instead of the wheel. So these uh, in vehicles with what the disc brake we are using, it will not stop the wheel directly, but it will stop the rotor. It is squeezing the rotor. And this force which is applied on the rotor is uh, transmitted hydraulically instead of through a cable. So in disc brake, the brake pads squeeze the rotor instead of the wheel and the force is transmitted hydraulically instead of through a cable. So here we can see the brakes that is the disc brakes on automobiles and how they are located. So on automobile disc brakes are located within the wheel. So you can see this is within the wheel inside the wheel itself. And motorbike disc brake of Kawasaki bike. So you can see how the disc brake is mounted on the wheel. So this is the disc brake which is mounted on the wheel. And these are the vents which are provided for the disc brakes. So you can see how the vents are provided and this is the disc and this will be mounted onto the wheel of the vehicle. So a moving car has certain amount of kinetic energy and the brakes have to remove this energy from the car in order to stop it. So a moving car or a moving vehicle has a certain amount of kinetic energy and the brakes have to remove this energy from the car to stop it. So these brakes convert this kinetic energy to heat generated by, uh, by the friction between the pads and the disc. So the brakes convert the kinetic energy into heat generated by friction between the pads and the disc. So most car disc brakes are vented. So you can see disc brake has vent, vents here. So most car disc brakes are vented. So vented disc brakes have a set of vanes between the two sides of the disc that will pump air through the disc to provide cooling. Why disc, these vents are provided? So that they will pass air and provide cooling. Otherwise, they may get heated up and which may cause damage to the disc. So vented disc brakes have a set of vanes 
between the two sides of the disc. That pump, so these veins will pump air through the disc to provide cooling. So, this is all about the braking system. So, we have studied different types of, we have studied what, what is braking system, we have studied different types of braking system and how they work. So, I hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.